Mr. Shapiro, you talked about white privilege. And um, just this week, I had a conversation with Rachel Lazar, who's done some work, um, a Jewish um, American woman who's done some work on this area, as well as uh, having extensive conversations um, with Dr. Greg Parks of Wake Forest University, who's also talked quite a bit about um, critical race theory. Um, and it's, it's my understanding that white privilege is not telling individuals that they cannot speak, but it is a term for societal privilege that individuals have as a benefit of their white skin. Um, and I don't think that, um, and I think universities would be remiss to then say that because you're white, you're not allowed to say anything that's critical of white people. I didn't know that white privilege actually went into that sphere. My understanding is it's just, and the issue is, is that white privilege makes people uncomfortable to talk about the societal privilege that they have. Well, to, to me, the, what I say on campuses all the time is if you want to cite instances of racism that we can all find and fight together, that's something that I'm more than willing to stand next to you and fight because that's obviously stuff that we should fight together. But when you just say that there is a white privilege out there in the ether and that by dint of birth, your skin color generates for you an advantage, what you're really saying to people is that you, your view is less valuable because you have not experienced what I've experienced. And that is an identity argument, that's a character argument, that's not a rational political argument that can actually be, be taken on in any way. That's, that's, it's, more of a, it's more of a cudgel and a club than it is an attempt to open a discussion. Well, I think it's a um, demonstrable evidence that um, through society's demographics that um, being white has societal privileges that being black does not. But I well, we, we am can talk very about how that manifests because that's I'm also interested in what you just said now was that you would stand next to anyone who has this. So Mr. Shapiro, my question to you is, um, for Ms. Ms. Dumpston, the tying the noose around the campus and writing messages that target African American young students, would you consider that hate speech? And then would you stand next to her and fight for her? As I say, I would. It, it, this is the first I'm hearing about it, honestly. But it, really, from what, yeah. Um, but but from from hearing about it, maybe it's, it's local. I mean, I'm from LA. Um, but in any case, um, I'm more than happy, more than happy to, to stand alongside her and, and fight whatever group was responsible for this. Not, not only more than happy, I mean, you're talking about the alt-right. Again, I was the number one target of anti-Semitic harassment from the alt-right last year. Thank so you. I'm more than happy to do all that. And I, I think there's one more distinction that has to be made. When we talk about cases like, like Taylor's, they're horrific, and the administration is siding with Taylor. Okay, the administration is doing the right thing by Taylor, or trying to do the right thing by Taylor, as they should be. And I think that we need to make a distinction between cases where the administration is actively participating in the suppression of speech and cases in which the administration is trying to do the right thing as a, as in, order to, in order to make people, in order to punish people for uh, application of crime. 